Hello everyone, it's me Jake again and welcome to part 2 of the Indefinite Leave to Remain vlog. For this vlog, I'll go through with you the documents that you need to prepare and answer the frequently asked questions which come up during the logging in of your application on the government website. So let's begin. Let's start with the documents. You need to listen very carefully. If you just read the government website during the application, some of the documents are not specified but they will be described. So for example, they will say you will need a document from your employer showing this, showing that, but they won't tell you straightforward that this is. So listen very carefully and if you have a pen and paper, take down all of these documents as we go along. For all of the documents that will be mentioned, you need to scan them clearly and upload them to your application account on the government website. So here are the documents that you need. So number one, you will need your passports. And that's with an S. If you have more than one passport, you also need to scan your older passport. Now very important, you need to scan all of the pages, even if they are blank. What happened to me before is I only scanned the information page where you have your name, your date of birth, and your address and all that, and the pages that have a stamp um, showing the dates when I left the country and came back. But when I went for my appointment, the application officer said, oh, you actually need to scan all of the pages, even if they are blank. The home office is very particular about seeing all of the pages. So good thing for me, the application officer was very nice and she really took a lot of time to scan every single page right there in front of me. Number two, you need evidence of your current immigration status. So this is, of course, your current biometric residence permit or your current visa. But also, you will need to scan a copy of your older visa. So if you have two BRP cards, then you need to scan both of them. So for me, I have one BRP card and the other visa, which is the Tier 2 General Visa, is in my passport. So I also scanned that. Number three, you will need your most recent payslip and your bank statement. This should be your latest payslip before you log in your application. Your bank statement must show the exact same amount written on your payslip going through or being deposited into that bank account. If you are on maternity, paternity, parental or adoption leave during your application, you need to provide all payslips and all bank statements during this leave. You also need to provide your payslip and bank statement that shows your immediate salary before you started your leave. Number four, you need documents from your employer or from your sponsor. And this include, number one, your last certificate of sponsorship, which shows your COS number. Number two, you will need a certificate of employment that shows your current rate of pay. It can be your hourly rate or your yearly rate, just make sure that it matches with your payslip. It must also show the starting date of your employment and it must be dated maximum of three months before your application. It is also very important that it is signed by the HR officer who prepared it and contains the employer's stamp. Again, if you are on maternity, paternity, parental or adoption leave, it should also contain the date that you started your leave your salary before you started your leave and your salary when you return from your leave. Number five, you need to provide evidences for your absence in the United Kingdom. So this includes your days when you went for holidays, whether it's going back home to your own country or for travel abroad. So for this category, I personally scanned the following documents. Number one, I requested an absence calendar from the HR department. This shows the granted annual leaves or holidays ever since I started my employment. It will also show your sickness days, but that's okay. That won't affect your application. Besides the absence calendar, I also took screenshots of my employee online to show the days of my annual leave. This is not specified in the website, but I took the initiative just in case the one provided by HR wasn't very clear. Another evidence you need to provide are your flight confirmations for all of your travels outside the United Kingdom. You don't need to provide your hotel bookings information, but just your flight confirmations. Number six, 
you need to provide an evidence of your capability to use the English language. And this comes in the form of your IELTS test report form. Now, there are some discussions on the internet saying that you need to take a new IELTS exam so that it is still valid, but that is not true. You don't have to take another IELTS exam. All I did was I scanned my IELTS test report form, which was back in 2014. This was the one I used to apply for my first visa in coming to the United Kingdom. Number seven, you will need an evidence that you passed your life in the UK test. So if you took the test before the changes were made, you need to scan your past notification letter. But if you took the test after the changes have been made and your results are now electronic, you just need to provide that unique number that identifies your result. Number eight, you need to provide your consent form. So when you do your online application, there is a downloadable form that you need to sign and date and scan again and upload to your application. This is your consent for the Home Office to verify third-party information, whether it's from the IELTS or from your sponsor or for any other institution related to your documents. So those are the documents that you need. Out of all these documents, the first one that you will want to secure first is your certificate of employment and your absence calendar because HR can take a lot of time to respond because of the coronavirus and they're working at home so it might take some time to retrieve your records so it can take up to one or two months even for you to have your certificates. Your bank statement must be dated minimum of one month before you log in your application. Now you know the documents that you need to prepare. Now I'm going to go through with you the application form that you need to fill in in your UK and visas immigration account. So I have a printed copy of my application here with me and I'm going to go through with you those specific information that you might not be sure what to put in. Okay? Now on the very first page of your application, it will ask you for a unique application number. So this is a unique number allocated to you by the Home Office for your previous visa applications. So if you still have a copy of your application for your previous BRP, you should have a paper that looks like this. And right there at the start of the letter is your unique application number. So you need to type that in to your form. If you've lost this letter, don't worry, it's not going to make them reject your application. The purpose of that unique application number is that it will be quicker to retrieve your old records. Next, you will see a line that says select a category in which you are applying for indefinite leave to remain. So you need to choose tier 2 migrant and after that tier 2 general. There's also a question that asks do you have an immigration advisor based in the UK? So if you are making the application yourself, then you should answer no. For your personal details, it will ask for your address. Now make sure that this is the current address you are living in and also make sure that your employee profile or the details in your ESR also has the exact same address and the same date when you started living in the address. Further down, it will ask you, do you have a valid national identity card? If you're from the Philippines, this should be an ID issued by the Philippine government. For my application, I use the Unified Multi-Purpose Identification Card or UMID and after that you will be asked to provide the number so you just write down your UMID card number. Next let's go to immigration history. So the first question there is when did you first enter the UK? Make sure you write the date of the first day that you landed and entered the United Kingdom which is reflected in your passport. After that it will ask what evidence will you provide to support the reasons for all absences from the UK and Crown Dependencies. It's a free text format so you can write there what evidence you will provide. So for me, I said I will attach the absence calendar provided by the employer showing the dates taken for these holidays were paid annual leave and days off work. I will also attach the travel documents for all of my flights. So I wrote that in free text. After this, you will be asked for all the dates where you were not in the United Kingdom and you need to provide a reason. So it looks like this. So it will ask you, 
which country did you visit? When did you leave the UK? And when did you return to the UK? So make sure that the date you put matches the stamp of the immigration officer on your passport. It will also ask for the reason for this time spent outside the UK and Crown Dependencies. So this is another free text box where you can write the reason. So you can say like, I went for holiday to the Philippines to spend time with family, blah, blah, blah. So it depends on your reason. So you can just free text it. Okay, further down, there's a part that asks about your sponsor. So it says, what is your sponsor license number as shown on your certificate of sponsorship? So this should be on the top part of your COS. Next, for the immigration details, it will ask, do you have any home office reference numbers? So for me, because I still had that letter I showed you earlier, I said yes, and I put down the reference number which is my unique application number. The next question is, have you previously lived in a country outside the UK, including your country of birth? So that's a yes. And the country I lived in was Philippines. And you put there the date you lived there from, which is your date of birth. And the date you lived there to, which is the last day you were in that country before you flew for the United Kingdom. Although it will be common sense, but it will still ask you the reason you live there. Anyway, for me, I wrote here, I was born and raised in the Philippines. This is where I grew up, went to school, and eventually worked as a nurse before I applied to work in the UK. Near the end of the form, it will ask you to enter your life in the UK test unique reference number. So you can find that in your past notification letter or if you're in the new process, you will find that in your online account. For the section that says your home and finances, it will ask your standard occupational classification code or SOC code. And for us nurses, it's 2231. And that's it. Those are the parts where you might not be sure what to put in. So I've clarified that for you. All the other questions will be quick and easy for you to fill in. So once you filled in this online application form and you have uploaded, all of your scanned documents, and you can finalize your application. When I applied, I was redirected to another site where I could book for my face-to-face -face appointment. According to my friend May, who has just sent her application, at the current time, you will not be automatically given a date for your application. So once there is an available slot, they will call you. So make sure that the contact number that you put on your application form is working. Once you have your appointment date set up, make sure that you arrive for your appointment 30 minutes before the time because when you enter, even before the coronavirus, it was already very strict. It was like being in an airport so you need to remove your bag, have it checked and you will enter through a metal detector to see if you have any weapons or you know anything that is illegal before you can enter the actual appointment area also even though you have uploaded all of your documents there is a possibility that when it comes across to the home office some of it may not be clear so as a safety precaution bring all of your original documents with you so if there is anything that is not clear then the application officer can rescan it right there in front of you so their setup is they have a computer and they have a scanner with them. So make sure you bring all of your documents. So I'm just going to run through with you um, what actually happens during your face-to-face -face appointment based on my experience. So I had my appointment in an office in South Croydon. I arrived 15 minutes before the time. So when I entered the venue, my bag was checked. I went through a metal detector and a security personnel frisked me again for any other illegal stuff. Having been cleared of that, I went inside the application area. I was given a number. I sat down and wait for my number to be called. Later on when my number was called, um, we were called in, a group, in groups of five and we were shown the machine where you need to input your biometric details. So it's basically just the officer telling you how to use the machine, what to do and what not to do. So they will tell you like, you should remove your glasses, um, you shouldn't smile. So the, the application officer will tell you all of that. So after orientating you to the machine, you will then be given the time to do all of the biometric stuff. 
After that, you will be told to sit down again in the waiting area. And after 5 to 10 minutes, depending on how long the queue is, you will be called again and you will be face to face with the application officer who will check all of your documents that you've uploaded online. She will also check all the biometric information you've just provided 10 minutes ago and make sure that your thumbprints, your fingerprints are clear. If some of it are not clear, then she will have to redo it right there in front of her. She will also take a photo of you for the application. So make sure when you go for your application, you're wearing something formal or semi-formal. So for me, I just wore a polo shirt and that was okay. When she has checked everything and it's all done, she will approve your application and that's it. And now you just need to wait for your decision. If your application is successful, you will receive a biometric residence permit that says indefinite leave to remain, indefinite leave to enter, or no time limit, depending on your situation. This biometric residence permit lasts for 10 years and it actually has an expiry date. But that doesn't mean that you have to apply for ILR again. It's only the expiration date of the card. You have to remember that you need to apply for a replacement card three months before the actual expiration date. And this will be via the BRP replacement service where you will pay 56 pounds. And I will put the link of that service down below. Once you have your ILR, you need to maintain good status because it can still be taken away from you. Your ILR can be revoked if number one, you are deported back to your country for criminal investigation or for any other reasons. Number two, if you are liable for deportation or you need to be deported but you can't be removed from the United Kingdom for some legal reasons, for example, if you are a refugee, so you can still stay in the United Kingdom but you will not have your indefinite leave to remain. Number three, it may be revoked if later on they found out that you obtained your ILR by deception. And lastly, if you were granted the ILR as a refugee, but now you are no longer a refugee. And that's it. I'm hoping your application will be successful. I hope these vlogs have been very helpful to you. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click that like button. And of course, share these two vlogs to your friends who are applying for their ILR. I will see you next time, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.